This is the Homestead Journey Podcast, the podcast dedicated to the pursuit of self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and sustainability. This is episode number 49 of the Homestead Journey Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you once again for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here on the Homestead Journey. My name is Brian Wells. I am coming to you from 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. Before we jump into this week's Homestead Happenings, I did want to give you a bit of a podcast update, and that is that this week, Amazon Music went live with its podcast offerings, and the Homestead Journey is a part of that. So if you are someone who is a part of the Amazon Music tribe, we'll call it, (laughs) all you have to do is say, Alexa, play the Homestead Journey podcast, And I think it will do that. If you have an Alexa, let me know. Try it out. But anyhow, we are a part of Amazon Music's podcast offerings. And so if that might be an easier way for you to find us, to listen to the the podcast, that is now an option for you. And so I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that. Let's jump right into this week's Homestead Happenings, and I will bring you up to speed with what we've been doing here on 3B Farm and Homestead. Normally, when I do the Homestead Happenings segment, I start at the beginning of the week, and I kind of work chronologically through the week and bring you up to speed with the things that we've been doing here on the Homestead. This week it's going to be a little different, and that is because our major event this week took place, well, on Friday and Saturday. Yesterday, I record these podcasts on Sunday evenings that happened yesterday and the day before, and that is that we had our first frost of the season. Now, the frost on Friday night, I didn't do anything at all. I just kind of rolled the dice and let things go. And Saturday, I could see there was some frost damage on some peppers and some tomatoes and things like that. But it certainly looked like things would survive for a little while longer. However, they were forecasting on Saturday evening that it was supposed to be even colder than it was on Friday evening. And so I opted to go ahead and pick all of the tomatoes, the peppers, Anything that might be cool weather sensitive, I went ahead and just picked it all and kind of, I figured, all right, it is what it is. We're going to call it quits. Part of it is because I don't have enough sheets and tarps and things like that to cover my gardens. Secondly, because of the issues that I'm having with regards to jars and what I'm what am I going to do with all of this food, I just felt like enough is enough. It is what it is. It will be what it will be. And I really did not want to roll the dice and lose what we did have up there. If it was going to be really, really cold on Saturday, I didn't want to lose the remaining vegetables. So I went ahead and picked all of the green tomatoes, I picked the peppers, I picked the shell beans, the dry beans, those kinds of things, and brought them in. I could have left the beans out there probably, uh, especially the dry beans, but I just I figured I'm going to go ahead and pick everything and pull it in. Now, we still do have cold crops out there like kale and collards and Swiss chard, and beets and carrots, things that aren't as sensitive to cold weather, but pretty much the tomatoes, the peppers, those beans, those kinds of things, I've pretty much picked everything that is there. Now, we did not end up having the really cold weather on Saturday that they had forecasted, so thank God for that. And who knows, I may get a few more things uh, throughout the next couple of weeks because it does look like we have some milder temperatures in the future. But at least for us right now, I think the bulk of the summer garden is over. On Saturday, we also went ahead and harvested our potatoes and our sweet potatoes from the Ruth Stout bed. And to be honest with you, 
the harvest was very disappointing. I got one good sized sweet potato and the other potatoes were rather few and far between. I got some, but certainly not anything near what I had hoped to get from the Ruth Stout method. But I don't think that it was the method's fault. I think it was how I applied the method. When we pulled back that hay, the ground underneath was very, very dry and very, very hard. And I, I did not water, and on purpose, and we'll, dis, we'll discuss why later on in the episode, I did not water the Ruth Stout bed at all this year. And so I think that explains why I had some difficulties with certain things there. But our harvest of potatoes and sweet potatoes certainly wasn't what I had hoped it would be. But what I've gone ahead and done is kind of tried to uh, block off part of the Ruth Stout bed where I'm going to plant garlic and a few other things. And then we're going to move our chickens up there and we're going to let them scratch around in the hay and deal with whatever they can find and they'll let them kind of prep the garden for the winter for us. And I'm going to bring in another layer of hay a little bit later on in the fall. And then that will be put to bed and be ready for us to plant again in the spring. Now, as far as what other things we did this week, I did can up some shell beans this week. Very excited about that. Our scarlet runner beans and black coat runner beans just did great this year. And they are so pretty when they are shelled. If you don't follow us on Instagram or Facebook, why not? <laughs> but I did post um, some pictures of those beans when they're shelled and they're just absolutely gorgeous. So you want to check that out. And while you're on our Facebook site or on our Instagram account, definitely go ahead and subscribe so that you are notified of any updates that we post during the week. But I was very excited to do those shell beans. I have not canned shell beans in a number of years. My grandfather always used to can shell beans and I love shell beans. I just haven't messed with them up until this year, but excited to have those in the pantry as well. I also did up a mess of cowboy candy. Now, if you're not familiar with cowboy candy, cowboy candy is jalapenos in a in a sweet syrup. I did not have a lot of jalapenos. What I had were volcano peppers. Volcano peppers are a little bit more mild than jalapenos, but I went ahead and used them anyhow, mixed in some jalapenos. Now, this is one of those things that, like pickles, you need to let it marinate for about a month. And so I'm going to do that. And then in about a month, I'll crack those puppies open and I'll let you know what I think. I also ground up those peppers that I smoked last weekend. And let me tell you something, folks. I cannot wait to try those in different marinades. I think they are going to be amazing. Amazing. Now, my nose was running as I did this. <laughs> but boy just oh it smells so good but then i went ahead and took the peppers that i pulled out of the garden on saturday and those went into the dehydrator without smoking them because i wanted to have both smoked peppers and just regular peppers ground up to make you know different different sauces or different rubs whatever different seasonings and uh, that way you will have a little bit of a different flavor profile the smoked ones versus the ones that aren't smoked now, we had some tomatoes that were ripe this week that I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with them until my son said to me, Dad, could you make me some tomato soup? Well, I had not considered making tomato soup. Sure, I'll make you some tomato soup, except for the fact that right now, as I shared with you last week, we are running low on pint jars. And so what I decided to do was to freeze those tomatoes and then in a couple of months, hopefully I'll have some empty pint jars and I'll be able to pull those tomatoes out of the freezer, let them defrost. Their skin should just slip off very easily. And then I'll be able to turn those tomatoes into some tomato soup and can that up. And then we'll have one more great thing to come out of the pantry on those cold winter days. Mm, I cannot wait. Finally, we had a bit of a fail this week, and that is that we tried to make some green tomato jam. Well, my wife was making it while I was cutting up the hot peppers to put them in the dehydrator, and this was the first time my wife has ever tried to make jam. 
And it was a recipe that I wasn't very familiar with, and I gave her bad instructions. Now, what you were supposed to do was bring the tomatoes and sugar to a boil, and then add in a packet of jello and let it simmer for 20 minutes. Well, I didn't tell her about the simmer. And so she boiled it for 20 minutes, and we ended up with something that was more like rubber cement than it is jam or jelly or anything like that. So that was a bit of a fail, but we're going to try again tomorrow, and that will be one of the ways that we can use the green tomatoes if they don't ripen. Well, we're going to use these even if they do ripen. We're going to grab these green tomatoes right now. All right, that's what we've had going on here on 3B Farm and Homestead. Let's jump on over to this week's Charting the Course. I realized something this weekend, and that is that I am not a four-season gardener. And honestly, I'm not sure I'm ever going to be a four-season gardener. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I think I'm realizing that I'm not much more than a summer gardener. And that's okay. This year, I started feeling the pressure to be a multi-season gardener. In the past, I always only focused on having a summer garden. That's pretty much how people that I know that I grew up around really that's how they garden. A lot of people in the area where I live, they plan a garden Memorial Day weekend. Pretty much it's done by Labor Day weekend. This year, as I said, I started feeling the pressure to be a multi-season gardener. In part, I think maybe it was the pandemic. I had this incredible urge to grow as much food as possible, to grow as if our lives depended on it. Because, well, maybe they did. I also felt this pressure to be a multi-season gardener because I saw a lot of other people doing it. People planting spring gardens and then summer gardens and then fall gardens. But as the frost hit this weekend, instead of feeling sadness, I honestly felt a sense of relief. I realized something. I am ready for this gardening season to be over. I am done with shutting off canners at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm sick of having a table of semi-ripe tomatoes in the back window. I'm done with tripping over canners and rings and such. I'm done. Now, to be honest, what we had this past weekend was a light frost. Yes, Saturday was forecasted to be colder. But it wasn't supposed to be a hard freeze. Maybe the plants would have survived it. In fact, I think they really did. But I saw the frost coming and I used it as an excuse to pick all of my warm weather crops because I'm done. My excuse was that I didn't have enough tarps or sheets to cover everything. And that certainly is the truth. I wasn't prepared for it. But if I'm honest with myself, I didn't want to be prepared for it. I'm done. And it's not that I hate gardening. You know that I love it. I love starting seeds. I love planting seeds. I love caring for the garden. I love eating the produce. I love preserving the harvest. I love enjoying it all winter long. But for this year, I'm done. Now, I know there are a lot of things that I could do to extend the growing season. I could build cold frames. I could plant another round of cold, hardy crops. And there's probably a million and one other things that I could do to continue to grow food all winter long. But I'm done. I'm looking forward to spending a few months where my evenings aren't consumed by growing food. I'm looking forward to spending a few months where I can come home from work, put my feet up, and not feel guilty. I'm looking forward to spending a few months focused on some other activities that I enjoy. I'm done. 
Now, in January, the seed catalogs will start rolling in. The anticipation of spring and growing stuff will begin to set in. Between now and then, I'll probably sit down and jot down a few more notes, a few more ideas, a few more thoughts with regards to this year's successes and failures and what I'd like to do differently next year and what I'd like to try differently next year and what I might grow differently next year and all of those kinds of things. But for now, I'm done. Now, the end of the summer garden for me the end of that season, it's always bittersweet. But this year, for some reason, it's a bit sweeter than I remember. And you know what? It's okay. It's my homestead. And I'm done. Now, maybe you're someone like me who has felt some kind of crazy pressure to extend the season to grow all year round. But maybe you just don't want to. You just want to be done. It's okay. Join me. I'm done. On the other hand, maybe you're someone who loves growing food all year round. You enjoy the challenge. You enjoy everything about it. You've been willing to invest in the infrastructure. You're prepared to do it. I will be your biggest cheerleader from the comfort of my living room because I'm done. Now, I hope this doesn't come across as being super negative because I don't intend it to be that. Rather, I hope this comes across to you as being very freeing. Because I think sometimes what can happen is we can get so focused on how other people homestead, how other people do things, what maybe we think is expected of us, that it robs us of our joy. And we just need to do homesteading how it works best for us. And I am coming to the realization, at least I think I am, I'm processing this right now in my head. (laughs) Remember, this frost was last Friday, today is Sunday, so I've only had about a day and a half to think about this. But as I process this, I'm really coming to the conclusion that I think I'm a summer gardener. Maybe as the winter goes on and I start getting excited for Garden 2021, maybe my mind will change. But right now, I think I'm going to just simply plan for a summer garden next year, and that's what it's going to be. And I'm not going to worry about a spring garden and a fall garden, although probably I'll try to get an earlier jump on things than just waiting till Memorial Day weekend. But on the other hand, putting myself under that kind of pressure and then thinking that I just need to grow food all year round, I think I'm done with that. And I'm okay with that. And if that's where you're at, then I hope that you're okay with that as well. Do what works best for you, what what brings you joy, what brings you satisfaction, And it's all good. And if you're done, like I'm done, we'll be ready to go again in the spring. All right, everybody. That's it for this episode of the Homestead Journey Podcast. If you're done or you're not done or you think I'm way off base or crazy and cuckoo, whatever. Drop me a line, brian at the homesteadjourneypodcast.net, or you can reach us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. The links to all of our social media accounts are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so in a number of different ways. First of all, the easiest way is to simply share the show with folks that you think might find it interesting and helpful. Also, 
by leaving a review over at iTunes or Stitcher. I'm not sure if Amazon Music will allow you to do reviews or not, but wherever they allow you to do reviews or give us a thumbs up, that kind of feedback, not only does it help me keep going, <laughs> that positive affirmation that people are listening and enjoying it, but it also helps other people find the show as well. You can also support the show by shopping on Amazon. Over on our website, thehomesteadjourney.net slash shop is a list of items that we recommend that we use here on our homestead and there are links to Amazon where you can purchase those items. The only things that I list there are things that I use and recommend. Just because I've bought it doesn't mean that it makes the list. So these are things that we use, we recommend. So check that out, thehomesteadjourney.net slash As always, the music on this show is provided by audionautics.com. So a big shout out to them. And until next time, everybody, keep up the good work.